Hi everyone, I'm Ali Graven. Today I wanted to talk to you about harm OCD. Harm OCD is a very, very common type of OCD. In my practice, I see it a lot. Um, I would say probably 60% of my clients have harm OCD. So it's, and harm OCD can, uh, can connect to most OCD themes. So say, for example, uh, classical harm OCD, where a person's afraid of uh, what if I'm going to do something so they avoid knives, they avoid anything that's sharp, um, they avoid being uh, um, alone with people, you know, those kinds of things, right? That, that's a very kind of classical harm OCD. But I also see quite a bit of um, harm OCD connected to magical thinking. So if I pick up this cup with a bad thought, that means something bad is going to happen to this person, so I can't do that. That's magical thinking connected to harm OCD. Or religious OCD, that if I am praying, and while I am praying, I have a bad thought, something will happen to this person, right? So harm connected to religious OCD. Um, or cleaning OCD, of course, classic. Uh, actually, you know, with cleaning OCD, it I don't find it nearly as common as it is portrayed uh, in the media. To kind of give you an overview, um, out of all my clients, people who just have cleaning OCD, which is, you know, just cleanliness, um, it's maybe 5%. I just don't see it a lot. I don't know if it's maybe because I'm not doing a lot of videos on this specific type of OCD, but I just don't see it a lot at all. I generally see, like I said, harm OCD, uh, religious OCD, relationship OCD, um, sensory motor OCD I see a lot, um, real event OCD, false memory, of course, false memory OCD is a classic. And again, all of these other ones can also interconnect with uh, harm OCD, like an example of false memory. What if I uh, killed someone and forgot? You know, that's a classic false memory or hurt somebody in some way and forgot. Um, harm OCD usually, not always, but usually will attach uh, the kind of focal point of your harm OCD um, would be somebody who is usually very vulnerable, who maybe depends on you um, in some way or who you love very much. That's usually who... Um, you are afraid that something will happen to. And that's kind of, th that's what I see a lot. Again, that's not always the case, but most of the time that's the case. So that could be uh, parents, children, loved ones, um, something like that. Um, now, in terms of uh, manifestations of harm OCD, so how does it present itself? So uh, avoidance rituals. Avoidance rituals are usually um, staying away from anything sharp, staying away from being one-on-one -on -one with a person. Um, in case of, for example, driving OCD connected to harm OCD, what if I drive and kill someone? Or what if I was driving and killed someone, but now I don't want to drive again to get the thoughts again, right? So... Um, a lot of the times a person will avoid driving or they will drive and they, they will come back. Um, but but mostly avoiding um, is in, in this kind of situation is very, very common. Um, also avoiding watching TV on the topics that scare the person. Um, that That's also very common as well. Also, uh, I forgot to kind of mention this, but uh, harm OCD doesn't necessarily always mean harm to others, but also harm to self, such as suicide OCD, right? So that type of OCD is also very common and still harm OCD because it's still connected to causing harm, right? The fear of causing harm. So um, so those are the avoidance rituals uh, or avoidance of compulsions, behaviors, let's say. Um, now, in terms of uh, compulsions, checking, analyzing, comparing yourself to others. Um, compulsions kind of depend on which other type of uh, theme it interacts with. So say, for example, if your harm OCD is connected to false memory OCD, um, a lot of it is analyzing, asking other people, did I do anything? What time did I come home? What did I say when I came home? Trying to kind of piece together the story. Um, of what happened, th that would be a very common thing. Um, in terms of, say, uh, uh, magical thinking, the compulsion would be to redo the action to make sure that 
the bad thought would not cause harm. So th that would be a physical compulsion. So again, like I said, like you pick up the cup, um, you picked it up wrong, uh, something bad's gonna happen. So you have to put it down and pick it up again. That's what OCD tells you, right? So that that's a very common uh, one as well. So now that we established what harm OCD is, now let's talk about how to get rid of it. The first uh, step that I wanted to kind of preface this with is if your loved one is suffering from harm OCD. So if you're not listening for yourself, but you're listening because someone you know is suffering from harm OCD, you need to understand that um, in terms, I can give you, I talk to people with OCD all day long. I have client after client after client. So I have all of the analytics, statistics that you can ask for. And I can tell you, without a fail, every single time, whenever family helps, and I'm putting in air quotes, helps the person feel safe by doing compulsions, by helping with rituals, it only makes the situation worse. So if, say, for example, the person is afraid to drive, so other family members are driving for this person. If the person is afraid of knives, the knives are now being hidden so not to uh, traumatize the person, um, and so on and so forth. The more you do this, the worse the person will get. Whenever people come to me and they're in really, really bad shape with a lot of compulsions, um, usually it's because their whole family is helping them do compulsions or avoidance behaviors. I see this every single time without fail. So the first step that you can do is if you are already in a situation where um, it is out of control and there is a lot of compulsions that are happening, start helping the person cut them out. Little by little. Again, um, a good goal to have is 25% less each week. So that means in the, in the course of the entire month, you are done. So 25% each week, you're helping them reduce. So they're still doing, you know, the majority of the compulsions that they were doing before. So they're fairly, I mean, you're never comfortable with OCD, but they're fairly stable in the amount of compulsions, but just a little bit less. It's, so you're not pushing them that far, but you're helping them reduce to some extent. And of course, they have to be open to it. But, um, but you're helping them reduce to the extent that they're able to reduce. And I think 25% is a very good achievable goal. And 25%, four weeks, you're done. So it doesn't mean like you're actually done done because the thoughts are still going to come in. But if the person does pretty much zero compulsions, then maybe it's another month until they feel better. And then maybe a few more months for the brain to recover. So that that's generally how ideally it should go. Um, so again, my advice to you as somebody who is uh, um, around somebody who has harm OCD is as much as possible help them reduce compulsions and it's not a make or break please make them understand this that it's not a make or break that if you didn't do the uh, the right thing if you reacted today that doesn't mean it's all over you're back to square one you will never recover everybody thinks this with any type of uh, OCD that if they made a mistake somewhere along their recovery um, that that means they will never recover and you have to be very careful with this because this fear of what if I never recover because I've made this mistake or that mistake, you know, in terms of reacting, um, that can become a theme in itself. So fear of recovery, right? Fear of, or rather fear of never recovering. Um, that can become an OCD theme, a secondary OCD theme as well. And I actually see quite a bit of this, that the, the person starts to make recovery work really important. And as soon as you make something really important, OCD will jump right on that topic, you know, and that's what happens. So uh, not obsessively trying to be perfect, but just doing 25% better each week, which means your goal is to do 25% better each day, basically. And this because some days are going to be kind of going backwards, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. So it's like we're, we're trying to stabilize on, you know, steady 25% better each week. That's, again, reasonable, achievable goal. Um, if you are going through uh, harm OCD yourself now, um, so that's next part of this, 
you need to understand, first of all, that you are not the only one going through this. Second, that this is not the first, most likely not the first OCD thought you've ever had that has to do with harm. If it is the first OCD thought you've ever had that has to do with harm, um, first of all, uh, <laughs> kind of this is kind of a little bit off topic, but um, consider uh, that you found the route to recovery very fast compared to most people. Because for most people to understand that when I'm experiencing harm thoughts, it's OCD. And this is what I need to do for uh, recovery. And how do I recover and come to the right place and find the right people who can help you recover, you know, such as this channel. You know, all of this, some, uh, I guess, uh, on average, to uh, get proper uh, diagnosis, proper treatment for OCD, proper... You know, in terms of diagnosis and treatment, these are terms that are official uh, medical terms. But, you know, what I'm saying is to basically understand what is actually happening. Why am I actually having these thoughts? Usually takes, I would say, I think the last statistic, you can Google the statistic on uh, online, huh, on Google. <laughs> but uh, um, usually it takes, uh, I think, over 10 years. 10 years. So this is your first OCD thought. It's great that you found th this uh, um, channel and how to deal with harm OCD thoughts this quickly. Okay. So that's first of all, but for 99% of people, this is not your first harm OCD thought. So the last ones felt equally important or more or less equally important. They drove you, you know, into all kinds of compulsions because you felt like you needed to do this. And now this one feels important. And now this one is driving to you to do compulsions or, um, avoidance or whatever. View it as not my first OCD thought, not my last OCD thought. I'm choosing to disregard based on the fact that this is common. Everybody experiences this. Ali talks about it all the time. I'm choosing not to do this. Kind of see yourself, if you can imagine this, see yourself standing in the middle of a tornado and the tornado of thoughts is going around you, but you're standing with your feet firmly planted on the ground and you're withstanding this tornado, kind of like a superhero, right? Like you're withstanding this tornado. You're not running away from the tornado. You're not seeking shelter. You're not trying to figure it out. You're not doing it. You're just standing and withstanding until the tornado by itself passes. So basically you're saying to OCD, okay, OCD, bring on all the scary thoughts. Clearly, yeah, of course I want to kill everyone. Sure. Yeah, of course. But I'm choosing to disregard now. I've paid attention to this long enough. I'm sick of it. I'm not doing this anymore. And be, it, that's how you keep your uh, stance in this tornado. Again, imaginary, right? In this tornado, that's how you keep your stance very strong because you're determined because you're sick of it. You've dealt with it long enough. You've given enough of your power away to this thing and you're not doing this anymore because you're sick of it, right? And that's what makes you stay strong Kind of the anger of the whole situation makes you stay strong. The anger of how much OCD has taken away from you. And refuse reaction. Refuse to do compulsions. If you can just refuse a little bit and then build on that, that's all you need to do. Just little by little by little. But every day something. Every day refusing a little more. So say if you avoid knives, you know, don't avoid them, say, walking two meters from them. Walk one meter from them. You know, these little tiny steps will, even over the course of a week, they will add up. Never mind over the course of a month. You know, and if you feel like 25% is a, is a huge feat that you will never be able to do, okay, so do 5%. You'll still get there from point A of doing all the compulsions to point B, no compulsions at all. You'll still get there. And when you get to point B where you don't, when you're not doing any compulsions, your anxiety gradually reduces as you get to that point B. And at that point, you won't feel like you need to. The anxiety will be not gone, but almost gone. You know, and then a lot, uh, with harm OCD, another thing I kind of wanted to mention is at this point, people get scared as well that they'll say, well, well, Ali, <laughs> now my anxiety is gone. 
So what does that mean? Does that mean I'm a bad person? Because now I don't even care about killing people, right? And it's it's just, it's good that the anxiety is gone. It's just, that's the next stage of the recovery that the brain is kind of like sending you the thoughts, you know, haphazardly every once in a while just to check in. But the anxiety is really not there anymore. But if you start to power up this idea of why am I getting thoughts without anxiety, it can ramp, uh, it can, uh, uh, ramp right back up. And then, again, the classic of, well, what if I never recover? And that can ramp up as well. So you have to be very careful that you don't, you know, fall into another trap. As you're trying to get out of one trap, don't fall into another one. So, and if you're in a situation where you do have this uh, um, connection between, like I was saying, like harm OCD and then some other type of OCD theme, then you do need to address both of them. You can't just work on harm OCD. You have to address them both because it's uh, it, one gets weaker and the other can get stronger because the brain's like, well, what else can I send you to protect yourself? I know. And then it goes to the next theme. So you just have to be very, very careful with that. I hope you find my videos helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you need help overcoming harm OCD, all the information on how to start recovery program one-on-one -on -one with me is on youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. You can book the session. Just again, as an aside, I always say this. If you are booking sessions, please make sure um, you schedule as many appointments as you can. So say if uh, you, you purchase the package that say uh, every other day, please make sure that at least the first week is scheduled so we, we can uh, um, have them spaced according to your package. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.